and I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> I had an event last night, and it, it went late. But here I am, yay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Barbara Moore Silva from NBC10 News. I cover health check, so I'm right at my element today. In fact, somebody reminded me of the story I did last night, which is very exciting for newly diagnosed breast cancer patients. They're doing a study over at Rhode Island Hospital called FROST for a reason. It's freezing alone instead of doing a resection that. Um, but what they do is they use cryoablation, and just like they do a needle biopsy, they stick it in your breast right into the tumor where the tumor marker is, and they just freeze that sucker. And in a, a previous trial, it was 100% successful. So that's a great thing. If you've, I'm, how many of you in here have had breast cancer? A lumpectomy, anyone? So you know, you have that scar and dimpling. This erases all that. You're in the office procedure, 30 minutes, walk out with a Band-Aid. So anyway, just wanted to let you know about the latest and greatest uh, if you want to look into that. But welcome this morning to 2017 Passport to Survivorship. This is the third year we've been doing this. I know it's been so exciting, and every year I learn something new, and that's why we're here, because we want to learn something new. How many of you have your little map? Yay, because there's so much going on here. In fact, I'm going to have to check it out, you know, different things that are going on. Someone showed me she made a bracelet. Where are you? Yeah, somebody made a bracelet downstairs that looked really cool, so you can design your own jewelry, apparently. So it's, like, really exciting. So I guess, do we have a slide presentation? No? No? Is that a... Behind the champion are the committed. That. Here's to them, to those sometimes taken for granted. Because the lines have to be painted, the uniforms need to be cleaned, and the lights must come on. Because sometimes getting to practice means getting up at 5 a.m. And practice doesn't always mean getting to play. There will be no articles, likes, or shares. No parades or standing ovations. No good job or well done or high fives. You simply see something that needs to be done, you do it. Because at the first pitch, face off, jump ball, or play from scrimmage, all that matters and all anyone notices is the game. But you are never taken for granted because we all know it takes a team. And there's one of our sponsors. And by the way, they are offering flu shots today. I'll be standing in line for one of those, <laughs> just in case. Um, also, did you get your raffle ticket when you came in? OK, you, you can win a really nice prize at the end. And you were talking about massage down the hall. Oh, wow. OK, so Reiki massages and reflexology just down the hall. So there's something for everyone. It's going to be an awesome day. For how many of you is this your first year? You're, you're like so excited. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's very exciting because it's free. Yeah? What do you say? If it's free, it's for me? Oh, God, so, so true. And you get a lot of information out of this today. There are so many different workshops. I'm sure you've checked out your guide here. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, just flipping through my cards to make sure I get all housekeeping done. You'll also want to make sure you come back to hear Roland Comtoy at 11 o'clock this morning. He's written a book, and I hear he's riveting, and he's going to do a book signing afterwards. And then Dr. Elizabeth Boham at 1245 again, you'll have a chance to win an awesome prize. So for each of these sessions, you get a raffle ticket. You have to be here till the end. So let's say you left, we draw your name, you're out. I'm just keeping it real. But, but you're not going to want to leave. OK, so I just want to get that out. So without further ado, I want to welcome to the stage Hannah Kirk. She's the Director of Patient Outreach at the Thomas Slater Compassion Center. And by the way, your center has helped many of my friends. So it's very much appreciated and, and very um, important in this community, as I know you know. Hannah organizes events leads educational workshops, creates fundraisers, and welcomes new patients to the center every day. She is accompanied by A.J. Lessa. I thought you were still in high school, A.J., but yeah. He's got that, you know, 
young look. <laughs> AJ, he's a senior, not high school student, patient advisor. <laughs> I'm just having a little fun with you. At your expense. At the center, <laughs> he handles one-on-one -on -one consultations, directing and hosting support groups, which we know are very important, especially when you're battling cancer, and speaking at various outlets, such as the MS Dream Center. Have any of you been there? It's just amazing, the work they do. And the Rhode Island, Rhode Island Cannabis Convention. So please welcome Hannah Kirk and AJ Lessa. And afterwards, we'll do question and answer. Yay. Hello, everybody. So I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the Gloria Gemma Foundation for the tireless work and resources they provide in support for the women and families of Rhode Island affected by cancer. I'd also like to thank the warriors and survivors who grace us with their stories and their presence today. Uh, can we just give them a quick round of applause? So it's equally important to recognize and remember those no longer with us because of cancer, like my friend Jeremiah Padula. So for him and for the rest of the people we lost to cancer, I'd like to give a moment of silence. So I have to be completely honest and say that it's truly a dream come true to be here presenting medical cannabis to you today. Um, just for a second, I'd like to ask that any members of law enforcement just cover their eyes for one second. Has anybody in this room ever tried medical marijuana or cannabis before? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So like most, I discovered cannabis as a teenager. And for me, cannabis was not the evil gateway drug that, it was, des that was described to me by society. It was actually really helpful in unknowingly self-medicating my teenage anxiety and depression and also in being inspired to learn to play guitar a little bit more than I would if not using cannabis. <laughs> but at 21 years old, I suffered a sports injury resulting in a herniated disc of, my L of the L5 portion of my spine causing sciatica, which is a radiating nerve pain that runs down my right leg and also affects my back, neck, and feet. Upon my diagnosis, my doctor prescribed a daily regimen of stretches, which helped my mobility, but didn't really affect my pain. He also prescribed muscle relaxers and ibuprofen, which over time had a negative effect on my stomach and GI tract, and still didn't really give me the pain relief that I was looking for. I was apprehensive, even embarrassed, to talk to my doctor about the idea of using medical cannabis as a medicine. The embarrassment was caused by stigmas surrounding cannabis that I worked so hard to break today. My apprehension proved to be ironic in hindsight. In light of my qualifying condition and lack of relief from conventional medicines, my doctor was completely supportive of my decision to try cannabis as a medicine. He signed my application, and after a short application process, I became a medical cannabis patient. At that point, it became a personal mission and responsibility to learn as much as I could about how this amazing plant was helping me and so many others. I spent hours every day reading books and articles, soaking in as much as I could. Eventually, I started my own garden, which was a lot of work, but was also therapeutic, educational, and rewarding. To grow cannabis, you need to have basic knowledge of a lot of different skills. Plant biology, carpentry, electric, heating, ventilation, cooling, manual processing, curing, and even chemistry. Um, and that chemistry would be necessary for making extracts and edibles. So there's a lot that goes into it. It was through my extensive research that I discovered Thomas C. Slater Compassion Center. TCS was named after the late great Marine and Democratic member of the House of Representatives, who among many other great accomplishments, sponsored the legalization of medical marijuana and its dispensaries in Rhode Island. He provided service for over 30 years in benefit of his country and the people of Rhode Island till his passing in 2009. His name was Thomas C. Slater. And for him, I'd like to give a round of applause. So TCS first opened its doors April 19th of 2013 just in time for 420. <laughs> so I'm guessing you guys know what 420 is, right? But do you really know what 420 is? I don't think anyone really does, but it's kind of just an overused term in, in the cannabis community for uh, lighting one up. <laughs> so 
Uh, we are the East Coast's first and biggest medical marijuana dispensary. We serve, uh, we are open to serving all 18,000 of Rhode Island medical marijuana patients. Um, we, we actually see about 800 patients on average per day. I became an advisor at TCS in April of 2015, almost three years ago. I've been lucky enough to assist in all processes of medical cannabis from seed to sale. In TCS, we manufacture almost all products ourselves in-house. From feeding plants in our multi-million multi dollar cultivation facility, trimming the finished dried herbs, packaging concentrates made by our extract specialists in our state-of-the-art laboratory, or helping to make tasty treats in the kitchen, I feel like my greatest strength at Slater is my ability to connect with the patients to provide them with the best care and most accurate information possible. And that's in cannabis medicine, of course. <laughs> I'm not really uh, med medically apt, but that's why we correlate with doctors to, to figure out if the treatment that we're giving you is in agreement with the treatment that they want for you. At TCS, we strive not only to provide medical relief, but also to embody an experience of community, care, friendship, and support. We're not like your average pharmacy. We provide medicine to a beautifully diverse group of people, from the elderly to the mailman, teachers, res retired police, to the children of Hasbro suffer suffering from epilepsy. So our patients range, range from as young as two years old up to 99 years old and probably up. Because of the unique attention to detail required to every patient and their individual needs, I've gained so many great friends and meaningful interactions, making some patients more like family than, than patients at all. Nothing brings me more pleasure than educating and empowering patients through accurate information. So medical cannabis offers potential symptom relief for migraines, neuropathic pains, neuropathy, arthritis, multiple sclerosis, nausea, chemotherapy relief. So some of the, uh, the negative side effects that come with the chemotherapy treatment, whether it's pain or the chemo fog or the nausea. Um, it also offers relief for motion sickness and vertigo, menstrual cramps, glaucoma, restless leg syndrome, insomnia, anxiety, and many other chronic ailments. PTSD, PTSD being one of the newest accepted um, qualifying conditions to finally take care of our veterans who decide to medicate with medical cannabis. So with that being said, I'd like to go a little bit more into uh, basically what I do a lot more specifically when I deal with a brand new patient who comes into TCS. Uh, what I did is I developed a one-on-one -on -one consultation program where we basically take people who are a little bit apprehensive or unsure about what to use or how to use it, and we try to basically go through the motions to figure out how we can make the best recommendation for them within their tolerance and their lifestyle. So a couple of the questions that we ask to start off is if you use medical marijuana before, re either recreationally or medically. Um, a lot of you said you have, so that's a good start. That kind of lets us know that you have a little bit of experience, you have your feet wet, and for the patients or people who haven't tried medical cannabis, um, then that lets us know that we should really start with a small calculated dose as to not give any unwanted effects or to scare you away from the medicine altogether. Um, so we also ask if patients would prefer a psychoactive, non-psychoactive, or both type of effects, which means you know if you wanna experience some of the uh, sedative, relaxing, and mood altering effects that come with the use of uh, high THC or high CBD. Now that's not always um, something that's required when you use cannabis medicine. A lot of people misperceive that you have to get high or that you have to smoke to consume cannabis medicine, and that's, that's not true at all. Um, there are two main cannabinoids that we're dealing with at Thomas E. Slater Compassion Center, the main one being THC, and that's the most commonly known. THC is the main psychoactive ingredient in cannabis. When THC enters the body, it attaches and stimulates cannabinoid receptors in the brain. This stimulation of these receptors affects the body in various ways, creating symptom relief. So at Slater Center, what we do is we try to use a very diversified mix of cannabinoids, um, which creates a great potential for hitting the most receptors, therefore giving the best relief. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit heavy. That's why we make sure to cater, with, with, uh, cater to every patient's individual tolerance level. The next cannabinoid that I like to talk about is CBD. Now that varies from THC in a, in a hugely contrasting way as to where it gives similar type of symptom relief as far as the pain, inflammation, nausea, uh, neuropathy, uh, also helps as an antidepressant and antipsychotic, all while being non-psychoactive. So it allows you to be functional while getting similar pain relief as conventional cannabis. So it really allows you to cater your, your cannabis usage to your 
daily lifestyle. So that way you're not inhibited and actually you gain functionality in your daily life and hopefully some comfortability and pain relief. Um, so the most important thing to remember about cannabis medicine is that cannabis compounds interact best when used together. And this, this effect is uh, referred to as the ensemble effect. So I like to get patients to think about it as like instruments in an orchestra. You know, when you, when you put the violin in an orchestra, it's nice and soft and composed, and maybe you can add a trumpet or some piano. When you, when you, when you add these instruments in a composed way, you get a great symphony of symptom relief. But if you just start banging on the drums and you know, playing the trumpet and not really thinking about what you're doing or keeping track of what you're doing, kind of just end up making a bunch of racket and not necessarily learning what's helping you the best. So we implore every patient to really take responsibility for the medicine and help us to help you by keeping track of what it does, how much you're consuming, and what effects you're getting on the back end, if those effects are favorable for you or if we need to try and move to another course of action. So with that being said, I'd like to talk to you about some of the different methods of ingestion that we offer at Thomas E. Slater Compassion Center. The first I'd like to talk about is the topicals. And the reason I want to talk about those first is because they actually don't break the blood barrier. They're really good for surface pain relief and applying uh, pain relief to the direct area rather than trying to medicate internally and possibly getting higher inhibited. Um, it's really good for things like arthritis, uh, nerve pain, inflammation. Personally, I use it for my shoulder and only about a dime sized amount rubbed in for about three or four minutes gives me two hours of really good dulling of the pain. It doesn't quite take it away completely, but it definitely makes a notice noticeable difference in my functionality and my pain level. Um, it works best on thinner areas, so the thicker the area, the harder it is to get to um, penetrate and absorb. So if you do need to medicate internally, we recommend that you use sublinguals. Sublinguals are great because they absorb under the tongue and they also circumvent digestion, uh, making for faster absorption and for faster pain relief. It also lasts a little bit longer. Uh, we also offer capsules, which are really great for patients who are used to kind of dosing on more of uh, a uh, uh, specific medicine regimen and a scheduled medicine regimen for specific dosages. Uh, it's a lot easier to control the dosages with elixirs. So we usually try to start people off with elixirs so that way they can tetrate their dosing off starting as low as possible and then increasing as necessary at their discretion. Uh, from there, we have a wide multitude of edibles. The edibles are mostly THC-based, but we do have a few edibles that are CBD-based, good for non-psychoactive effects. We offer cookies, chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies, macaroons. We have bomb bars that are very similar to Twix. Uh, we offer gummy bears, vegan uh, granola bars. So there's a huge variety of products, also medicated drinks, which are really good for catering to all lifestyles and making it a little easier to be discreet about your medication. Um, I'd like to take a second to talk about dry herb and flower. Um, that's something that a lot of people choose to use, but is not a requirement. There's two main kinds of flower. There's an indica dominant strain and a sativa dominant strain. Indica is known for being a little more relaxing, sedative, sleepy, good for uh, more body effective issues like uh, nausea, heavy pain relief. Uh, people who are looking to be a little more relaxed and sedated rather than uh, up and on the go. Now, if you need to be functional, uh, for a lo like a lot of us do, people who are you know working class citizens who can't just stop and, and sit down on the couch, um, we have sativa medicine, which is a lot better for kind of being up and on the go. Generally, has a little bit more of a, a zesty profile and really helps to kind of keep your energy up and not necessarily drag you down. Um, there's also CBD dominant me medication, which is flower available for smoking, vaporizing. Uh, and that's good for a non-psychoactive, strictly for the symptom relief. Uh, we also operate in concentrates. Concentrates are forms of THC and CBD, but they are separated from the plant matter to make the more favorable, favorable resin glands more available without having to consume the, the so many compounds that come along with smoking. It's also a lot better for your respiratory system, your throat and lungs, and acts as a bronchodilator to help expand your air pathways rather than constricting them like smoking. So really good for things like asthma, shortness of breath, and then once again, great for nausea, instant pain relief, because the way that they absorb through your lungs, it works almost pretty much instantaneously into your bloodstream. Um, so those are very convenient for being on the go, because you can just get direct applica applications at your discretion, at your dosage of your choosing. Um, So 
So with that being said, uh, we want to talk a little bit about finding your dose. Once you've selected a method of ingestion and know your desired symptom relief, it's time to select a dosage amount. Um, because our biochemistry and metabolism in combination with unique cannabinoid profiles of products being consumed dictates the symptom relief we get as individuals, it's important to start low and slow and take responsibility in tracking your experience. Um, we can't, we can't re reiterate that enough because if you don't know what it's doing for you, then we can't say what you should be taking or if you should be taking higher levels, lower levels. It's really important to know what you're putting in, know what you're getting out. So at Thomas C. Slater Compassion Center, your patient advisors are going to be your biggest asset. I implore you all, if you're interested in trying cannabis medicine, please talk to your doctors. At least beg the question, see if it's available for you. Um, at, the, at the worst, you could try it and it doesn't work, and then you try something else. But at the very least, it could help you. For a lot of patients, it makes a huge difference. And uh, I see it every single day with my friends and patients at the Thomas C. Slater Compassion Center. So thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something today. Let's get moving. There's massage, reflexology, and Reiki that way. So, and I'm tired. All right. So, so now that AJ has gone over uh, the full spectrum of what medical marijuana can do for you specifically, after you've gone and talked to your doctor and you've talked about possibly becoming a patient and you're looking into the um, application process, here's where I come in. The application is actually fairly easy. It's an eight-page document. You can find it right on the Rhode Island Department of Health website. In the search bar, just type in medical marijuana. It'll come right up. If you don't have access to a computer, I have plenty of them printed downstairs at our table, and I'd be happy to walk you through them even after this. So the application looks just like this. You'll print your name here, so when you send in the application in its entirety, they know it's for you. There's a few pages in here that you won't necessarily have to fill out um, because they might not... Um, be specific to you, but we do rec ask you and make sure possibly that you send in every single piece of the application, every page, even if they're not filled out, because they will send it back to you and we got to start all over again and we don't want to do that because it is the part Department of Health. So this first page is going to be about you. This is your patient form. This is where you fill out all about yourself. The bottom part here is going to be information on your doctor where you're a practitioner. Now, a practitioner that can sign your application can be any MD from either Rhode Island, Massachusetts, or Connecticut. So no nurse practitioners can sign this. It has to be an MD. Um, you must, for your application, be a Rhode Island resident. You have to submit, submit, geez. You have to submit proof of residency. So that can be um, a copy of your driver's license, um, a state ID, uh, vehicle registration, voter registration, um, correspondence from any other state agency with current date um, of your current address. Uh, you have to comply, complete and sign the form, as I said before, in its entirety. Um, once is the um, form is all set, there is a application fee of $50. Now, that application fee will drop in half if you do collect either here it is here. <laughs> okay. Security income, SSI, social security disability income, federal railroad disability benefit, so that's not social security or Medicare, veterans disability, or photocopy of your Medicaid card. So any photocopy of those attached to your application will drop your fee in half. So that's pretty substantial, you know, for a lot of us. So going back to the application, we're going to go to the second page. This second page is your practitioner's written form. This is the form I promise you, your doctors see about five of these a day. Um, they're very well versed in these. Don't feel like it's a surprise to give it to them. I mean, they've seen these before. It's, as AJ said, you know, we've got 18,000 medical marijuana patients in the state of Rhode Island. So it's no, you know, weird thing for a doctor. So they fill this out themselves. They'll check off one of the, um, approved ailments that gives you the medical marijuana card, they'll sign that and then that is all you need from your doctor. The rest is just up to you. That's the, really the only difficult part about the application is just getting your doctor to sign for it. The next page is a minor form. 
So that form is for any patient obtaining a medical marijuana license who's under the age of 18. So as AJ was speaking before, we have a lot of patients at Hasbro. So this patient, this, um, this form would be for them. And obviously, um, the next page would be filled out with someone who would be their purchaser or someone that can come in for them. So this next page is our natu natural person caregiver. Now the laws have changed um, pretty recently, and a caregiver is now somebody who can grow on your behalf. So if for any reason you, you know, um, don't, it's uh, a lot of money problems and you can't come in to buy your medicine personally, and you have a caregiver who can grow for you, it can make things a little more easy. Again, like AJ was saying, cultivation and growing can be quite a science and a chemistry, but if you have someone who's willing to do that, it's also a, it's also a great aid to you. The next page is an authorized purchaser, which is what I am. Uh, my father has um, severe Alzheimer's, so he, he um, takes medical marijuana for severe agitation. So he cannot come into the center himself. He no longer can drive. So he needs someone who can come in on his behalf and purchase his medicine so that he can be feeling better without the worry of how I'm going to get there. So an authorized purchaser is someone who has to be over the age of 21 years old who can come in and purchase on your behalf. So this page is filled out on them. If you are to do that, that is a $50 application fee to have an AP come and purchase for you. So what that means is when you get your medical marijuana card and you have your own um, medical, um, medical marijuana program patient number, they'll get a card issued to them as well with your patient number on. So when they come in, they purchase directly under you. They're not a patient, you're the patient, you're just, they're just subbed under your account. So that when they come in, it's super easy, they say your name and then they can come in and purchase for you. If you are to become an authorized purchaser, you do need to go through a background check because we can't just have anybody coming up in here. So if you are to do that, that's also fairly easy. You just have to go to your local police department, you can make an appointment with the state police, and you go and get fingerprinted and background checked. Now you need to bring either a money order or a check to the Rhode Island General Treasurer for I believe $27 for a background check. The um, police department or the state police will then contact the Department of Health, let them know that you have then been approved. You'll also get a letter in the mail so there's no waiting time to know whether it's okay or not. Once is you've been approved, you and your patient will both get um, a letter in the mail saying that you've been approved for your medical marijuana card. You take that letter down to the Department of Health right on Capitol Hill, Monday through Friday from one to three, and you go in, you have to bring a valid driver's license or like I said before, um, any type of state ID, and you bring that in, you get your picture taken that day for your card, hot off the press, they give it to you that day, then you are welcome to go to any of the three compassion centers in Rhode Island. I mean, you can come to the Slater Center because it's right down the street from Capitol Hill, so it's super easy. So there is the Thomas C. Slater Center, which we are proud employees of. There's the Greenleaf Compassion Center in Portsmouth, and then there's a Summit Medical in Warwick. But it, if, if anything, I get the most phone calls a day about how difficult and how overwhelming the application is. But the application is just a piece of paper, really. You just need your, your doctor's signature and the rest is just formality of you writing it out. And that, we talk to people over the phone writing it out a dozen times a day. You don't have to be a patient to give us a call and ask any questions because medical marijuana, if anything, is all about question and answer, trial and error. So even if you're not a patient and you are interested in becoming one and you want to give us a call and ask us about the application, you want to just come to the window and you need an application, I'll give you one under the window. Anything we can do to help you get to that process, make it a little more easy for you, I mean, we're happy to do that. If you have any questions on filling out the application or you need an application, um, I have plenty of um, printouts and folders with great information on the center, what we offer, um, more in depth on what AJ said. It's a, re it's a really great place. And we see people, some people come in multiple times a day just to hang out or say hi, they're in the neighborhood, they just <laughs> wanna chit chat. And it's true what AJ said, we've become so close with 
the people that come in. I, I can say for myself and probably for AJ that we know most of our patients on a first name basis. Um, we know when their birthdays are, what things you know they like the most, what products they're looking for. When people come in, it's, it's very overwhelming, you know, but we're there to tell you that it gets easier and we're there to help you in any educational way that we can because it's a learning curve, just like the iPhone. So, I mean, <laughs> you gotta, you just have to put yourself in there, you know, because the worst that thing that can happen is, you know, you try something different, like AJ said. So we're really just here to help you learn and help you feel more comfortable about possibilities for you to make your, make your life feel better and give you some more relief and a better wellness of life. And if you have any questions, we would be happy to answer them now or down at our table on the first floor. Go ahead. So as of right now, insurance does not cover, but we do offer um, help if you collect, as we said, any of the state assistance, you get 10% off all of your purchases. Yeah. Yep. They will not sign for you. So in that case, if, do you want to say that? Yeah, of course, of course. So is, is it a primary care physician? All right, so that's, that's not true. He's fully capable of signing. It might be a personal stigma, but if that's the case, I would implore you to just get a second opinion and see if another doctor might see if that's an option for you. Just because any, anyone, any doctor has the ability to sign, any specialist has the ability to sign. So if they say that they can't, it's a little bit of a lie. Whether, it's their discretion whether or not to, um, to give you a license if they feel personally that you're, you're not a requirement for that. But for, the, for you to tell them, you know, oh, I'm feeling something and I want to try something different, that, that's, that's your prerogative. And if you feel as though you need more help, then you should see a second, have a second opinion because I, w I don't want to speak for him, but we, we need to find someone who's, who's going to put your best interest at heart at what you want to do and what we're looking to do to help you, you know? So in, in the chance where there isn't a um, um, MD willing to sign for you, there are different places um, in place for situations like that. So there are different um, what we call liaisons between patients and um, doctors where they need signatures. So there's a number of different great um, companies, like there's one called Canacare, and that's in Massachusetts, um, and they will be able to find a doctor willing to sign for you so that you can go forward with the application process and you don't feel like, oh, my doctor won't sign, I'm stuck, that's it. We, we don't ever want to get there. There's another place called B&B &B in Warwick. They do the same thing. There is a fee for that. Um, whether or not both of those vary in pricing, I can't say with specificity, but um, that is also a great outlet to use if you cannot find an MD. But I would recommend trying to look because it, it, will, cost, it will cut your cost down a little bit of the application. Pardon? Yeah, I mean, that, of course, right. Abs absolutely, absolutely, encouragement. Any other questions? Yes. Right, right. 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 So, so you are a Massachusetts resident. Yes. So, unfortunately, as of now, we cannot take any out-of-state patients. We're only in Rhode Island. So, in that sense, you'd have to go through the Massachusetts Department of Health and um, find out how their application process is. I, I wouldn't believe it's, it's far different than ours. But I would also believe that they would offer some type of um, subsidized pricing if you do collect some type of state assistance. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, goodness. Yep. No, that could also be a combination of what's in the vent. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's coming up from that person's apartment, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, no, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay. 
So I think that would be more relative to a preferred method of consumption. I think maybe the carcinogenic smoke plays a factor in irritability for a lot of people's respiratory system. So that's why it's a really good idea to explore the different methods of consumption and also to think about vaporizing because vapor, vaporizing works on the same concept as breathing over a humidifier. You're inhaling heated air with you know vaporized compounds. So that's, that's one of the better options. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And I just need to go through the motion with the application? Yeah, so you would, you would fill out the same application as, um, as he would initially, but you would be filling out the authorized purchaser portion and then get your background check and send that in because then you would become his authorized purchaser. So that case, um, if he's not driving, you can come in and purchase for him, no problem. Absolutely. Is there one in the back? Any more? So none of it as of now is covered by any type of health insurance. Hopefully we're in the future it will, um, fingers crossed forever. But um, so as of right now, I, I, there's no type of um, um, subsidized pricing, but we do constant sales every day where um, all of our products are at a very affordable price. Yeah, we, have also, we also have a compassion program um, where if you're, if you're at a certain stage and you need help, we can help you. So there are some patients who have different types of medical where they have a medical spending allowance card. Um, some of those do work in Slater. Uh, there is a little bit of a discrepancy as far as whether or not that's something that's authorized on their end, but a lot of patients do it. so. Worth a shot. We're here till two. Yay, yeah, we're here so all we, day. We'll be here till two and we'll be downstairs at our booth answering all and any questions. Right, on the first floor, right in front of the main ballroom. One more question. More? Yeah. Um, Some do, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of people now um, printing their receipts to, to put on their taxes, absolutely, yeah. There's a certain spending limit, There's a certain spending limit now, but yeah, absolutely. As long as you keep your receipts. <laughs> Do we have any more? Is that it? Hooray! We're gonna be here till two. <laughs> you guys get to pick, pick a winner. winner. So oh my gosh. I don't know who wants to be the. You got it, Anna. Me. Okay. She got to do it. Okay. Oops. Oh, Oops. Oopsie Daisy. You got. You have your tickets out. Thanks, guys. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna have you guys read this because. Um, you have young eyes? Well, I have, I have high school eyes. <laughs> I, do, I don't. <laughs> so <you got> it. <laughs> ticket, ticket number 822896. Oh, <laughs> Congratulations. You've won a brand new car. Oh, <laughs> or whatever Gloria Gemma's going to give you. <laughs> In Garden City, fabulous. I love that place. Yeah. So come visit our booth downstairs if you want to ask any questions or just say hi. We'll be down there. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you, so much. Thank you Hannah and AJ. And um, 11 o'clock, we have Roland Comtoy. So we're excited about that. Massachusetts one. <laughs>